Wall connectors, Gen 2, Gen 3. Do I need to get Gen 3? Is it worth it? Let's talk about it. Let's go. Hey guys, my name is Taylor. This is EV Electric. Welcome here. Howdy. How you doing? It's been a little while since I've seen you. It's nice to see your beautiful face this is smiling back at me and hitting the like button. Thank you. I appreciate it. Over the weekend, I checked out one house with Gen 2 and Gen 3 charging and it was awesome to be able to compare the two side by side. So nice and easy. Let me talk about some of the stuff going on and we're also gonna talk about like throwing the Model 3 in there as well and talk about for three owners, do you even need this stuff? Let's talk about some of the stats and specs and all that um, and we're gonna compare Gen 2 and Gen 3 by the way and then we're gonna talk about like me actually charging at these and comparing them and what I got, what I saw, how I feel. I hope you're having a good day. Let's start with some of the specs here. Okay, older Gen 2 charges at a whopping 80 amps, which is not even required for the newer models that only charge at 48 amps. Now let's talk about the Gen 3, that charges at a maximum of 48 amps, and that is 11 and a half kilowatts. So what I got from this, where people are mad how they dropped it from 80 to 48 is, first of all, it's healthier for the cars to charge less. Also, less amps equals less heat, so, these Gen 2 chargers immediately had issues with overheating and I think like sparking I heard from electricians and, and all that kind of weird stuff that you get with really high amps like that. Having it go down to 48, I'm assuming this also cuts costs. I'm sure there's a good reason why it's 48 and not 80 and the main reason being your car probably doesn't even go up to 80 anyways. Next thing is cable length. So the 24 foot cable that's really, really thick, like this thick on the Gen 2 is pretty cool. It's honestly really nice. It's great for two cars, two Teslas in the garage. So if the charger's here, you can charge long and short distance. Very nice, very good. The thick cable is a little bit annoying and I'm sure Tesla's shipping cost was through the roof on that thing because just that huge 24 foot cable weighed so much, I think it's like 20 pounds or something like that. The Gen 3 is an 18 foot cable that looks more like the small little travel one that you see Model 3 owners using. And that's about this thick, which is really nice. When I immediately you know, started unwinding the Gen 3 cable, I noticed how nice, light, flexible, and easy it was. It was like using my travel charger that I use every day in the garage down below. Very easy to use. But one downside on the Gen 3 is that I believe it was inside EVs did a little research thing and they said that if you charge two Teslas in the garage or two EVs in general, whatever, and if your charger's on the wall here, the distance that you're gonna need to charge that you know longest distance car is about 20 feet. Obviously you can park closer and make your life more complicated, but um, that seems like about a reasonable number having two cars a comfortable distance away from walls and each other, 20 feet. So you being two feet less is gonna have to make you park closer. And that gets a little scary. So immediately comparing weight to these charges as well, because of the design on the Gen 3 and the cable thickness compared to that Gen 2, the weight was insane, the difference. Holding the box of the Gen 3 versus the Gen 2 was astronomically lighter. I don't know the exact weights, but I'm sure Tesla is saving so much on just shipping costs on shipping 
such a light thing. Some fun numbers for you at max volts and max amps. So that's 240 and 48 amps on the Gen 3 charger. A Model 3 can charge at 44 miles per hour. The Model S can charge at 34 and the Model X can charge at 30. Keep in mind for you Model 3 guys, the standard range can only go up to 30 miles per hour max on that and that's 32 amps, so just know that. Stating the, the miles per hour and all that also leads me to believe that most of us don't even need to be charging at, at um, 48. 32 is probably gonna do it just nicely overnight and stuff like that. But when you wanna charge quick and fast, you know you have that 48 to give you a little. And the final thing that we're gonna talk about before I get into my experience was the Wi-Fi. And I was super bummed on the Wi-Fi, honestly. I looked at the owner's phone, the app, and he said there's no connection, you know? I was, I was dreaming, all my dreams were crushed. When you see a nice power wall on there, you know, you're scrolling through, you see your Roadster, you see your Model X, you see your power wall. I wanna see my Gen 3 charger, but I didn't see that. He told me you have to log onto the computer and you have to type in your IP address and admin password and then you can access it. And it's only used for updates and setting up the charger so far. So in other words, it's used for nothing. My hope and dream was that it would be on the app. And if you have solar and you have a power wall and you have the Gen 3 and you have a Model X, you can you know, utilize all this and maybe you can set up like more of a hardcore schedule and you can see some better stats and stuff that's on your Gen 3 rather than having Wi-Fi for not too much of a reason now, but I have high hopes and I really do believe that it can do over the air updates. So it will have an over the air update that will probably let it to go in there and at least connect to all your other Tesla stuff there, like they state. Okay, what was it like charging with the Gen 2 versus the Gen 3? To sum it up, not much, not much of a difference, mostly for the reason that my car only accepts a max of 48 amps, and it doesn't even matter, you know, having the Gen 2 at 80 amps. So not much of a difference there in charging time or speed or whatever. The only thing that was a little bit nicer was um, the cable was less to deal with, mostly if you have another car in the garage, you know, hauling that big cable around and you accidentally swing it into the car, I'm sure it could do some damage on the thin light aluminum. So it's nice having a thinner cable, easier to deal with, Awesome. One thing I did notice about both of these coming from a non-user of these is that when you go to wrap the cable around each one of them, the dirt that's been on the ground that is now on the cable, if you have nice walls, nice white walls like what was in this house, you can already see that there's a little bit of streaks on the wall from hanging up these chargers. And over time, I can see this happening a lot you know, more. What I think Tesla can do is to make like a white or black a uh, little circle ring that goes around it that's like hard plastic. So when you put your wall up or when you put your cable up there, you're not like scratching it up or whatever. Other than that, the experience was awesome. They're both very like fluid, very easy, very supercharger Tesla-like. You know, it's like it's communicating with the car and that's because it is, which is nice. Overall, if I can sum this up, I would probably say if you have a Gen 2 in your garage right now, you really don't need a Gen 3. If you have a newer car, you really don't need one either way. If you have an older car that accepts 80 amps, then you definitely don't need one. So my logic right now is that since it's not so connected as I thought, like with the app and everything, there isn't much of a need for it if you already have a Gen 2 in the wall. The expense to buy another one and get it installed and all that really, really outweighs the um, positives that the Gen 3 has to offer so far. Now, one over-the-air update could totally change my mind, so be ready for that, you guys. That is, you guys have a good one. I'll see you later. Thank you for watching.